Unreal 5.6 is here, and while there isn't that much that I necessarily want to make specific contents about on Unreal 5.6, there is a slight little update to state trees, and since we've been doing so much state tree content on the channel lately, I figured I might as well throw in the little update for state trees. So we're here in Unreal 5.6, which actually comes with a whole bunch of new templates, a lot of which use state trees. So if you're trying to like figure out how state trees work and you have like seen my contents on it, but you want to see more, these new templates are actually a really good place to start. Because if you open up this uh, state tree here, you can see this is a fairly basic setup once you like understand the basic building block of state trees. But it's just a little bit more built out than I would build in something like my state tree introductory course or my quest course or my dialogue stuff. So it's a really good like resource to actually look at to see how you would like put this into practice. What I want to talk about is there's a couple of small little differences. Like I think this uh, like speech bubble thing wasn't there before, or I might have just missed it entirely. Uh, but that's just indicating that that state or that node now has a description. If I remove the description, you can see it no longer has that speech bubble. When I uh, reapply the description, the speech bubble comes back. So this is uh, just telling you, hey, if you hover over this, it has a tooltip for you to look at what it does. You'll also note that states that have a task in them that uses the tick event in that task now have this little icon next to it as well. I'll make the whole editor scale a little bit larger so that you can see it a bit more easily. But we have this little uh, thing here. And hovering over it, it says the state contains at least one task that ticks at runtime. So that is a really nice way of seeing which tasks have anything ticking in it. Along which we also now have the custom tick rate option on our state. So each state can now say, hey, I want you to be able to like tick because I want you to do something on like a loop every so often, uh, but I don't want you to tick every frame because maybe uh, it's something like, hey, find a new ideal location to move to, right? And instead of setting up a task that would have uh, something like on uh, enter task, you set a timer and then all that kind of stuff, you can just do that in the task tick right now you can just say hey this state has a custom tick rate of 10 seconds and now it will tick once every uh 10 seconds so that's just a lot nicer uh to work with things that tick and it's also going to save you a bunch of performance if you want something to tick because now you're not necessarily doing it every frame anymore so that's nice same thing will go with uh transitions by the way this especially is where i personally very often use this uh, trigger on tick, but that means that you're checking a condition every single frame, and you might not want to be doing that. So if you can just check it once a second, uh, now you can set your transition to run on tick, and we will actually use the custom tick rate for your state. You can set each individual state with its own tick rate, which is fantastic. Now, the main thing that I want to talk about now, uh, there's a couple more things, but the main thing that I wanted to talk about in this video is the one thing that's actually kind of annoyed me in the past. And that is, if we have a state with multiple tasks on it, in the past, when any of these tasks finished, so uh, we can go into like any of these uh, state tree tasks, and we open it up, this one doesn't have a uh, finish uh, with it. But if we do the uh, finish task here, if any task at all within a state finished previously, the whole state would be considered finished, which can be kind of annoying, if you have a task that sometimes needs to finish, but you want to apply it on a state that also has something else running on it, and you don't want that state as a whole to end. So now what we can do is with this tasks, we can choose, hey, when any of these tasks complete, that is marking the whole thing as completing the state. So in this case, that would be if we face toward location and that has a finished task in it, the moment that thing runs its finished task, it's going to consider the whole state as being finished. But we can also now change this to all. And this will only consider the state finished once every single task inside of it has said, hey, I'm done doing my thing. On top of that, every single individual task now has this thing where we can say, do you want to consider this for state completion? So maybe we still do want to set this to any, but I just don't want the uh, speed completion to be able to trigger the end. But the, every other task in this still is able to trigger the end of this state. Just don't want this specific task to be able to trigger it as well. We now have a much finer grain control over the customizability on what tasks trigger a completion event for the state as a whole. 
This was something that was desperately needed. And now we have it. Along with all that, uh, let's actually make a quick little task for this to show this off. We now also have the capability of setting up delegates uh, to do with state tree tasks, which means that we can now have tasks listening out for things to happen on other tasks very easily. So if I make a new blueprint class and we make that a state tree task, blueprint base, we'll call this a test task real quick and open that up, make a variable, if we type in delegates, we can make a state tree delegate dispatcher and a state tree delegate listener. So this is a variable that will be sending the signal. So this will be kind of like the event dispatcher. And this will be the thing that can hook up to a dispatcher from another state or from another task that will listen to that dispatcher. So let's uh, just make uh, two variables here, call this dispatcher and then make one that we'll call listener. In this case, we're going to be uh, setting these up both on the same thing. Obviously, realistically, you'll probably have dispatches on some of your tasks and then listeners on other of your tasks, and then you can hook them up uh, however you see fit, honestly. Both of those are going to be a input category uh, because we're going to require those, in this case, uh, to be filled in. And the listener, uh, do make sure to make that a delegate listener, right? So if we pull this into our uh, event graph, we should be able to broadcast our delegate. Now, due to the way that this is set up, uh, instead of using like normal delegates with like the event dispatcher system that Unreal already has, because exposing an event dispatcher as a variable is not supported, uh, apparently. So they're walking around with these structs. Uh, it seems like we're not going to be able to send through data with this. So that's a little bit annoying, uh, as far as I can see. Obviously, the workaround to that would be, before you do this, you set some piece of data on uh, your parameters somewhere, and then the other thing that's listening to it can then also grab that data from the parameter. And that way you can kind of like send through data uh, with extra steps anyway. But we can broadcast this delegate however we want. And then if we have a listener, so let's say we have, uh, this is two different events again, doesn't make a lot of sense to put it on the same blueprint, uh, but let's say we have this on like enter state and we can make this like is listener or something like that uh, for a boo. So if it is not a listener, it's going to be broadcasting. And if it is a listener, it will bind uh, to whatever it's going to be listening to. So we can bind this delegate and now we need to bind it uh, to something. And that will be the code that runs whenever this thing gets a, a signal from the thing that it's listening to uh, to run. So we can say like custom event, this will be run on delegates heard or something like that. Again, this is more of a general concept type of thing that I'm showing. Uh, I'm not going like super into detail about setting things up here. I just want to show you, hey, Unreal 5.6 is still, in fact, developing state trees and they are getting better and better with every version. So... Uh, this is how you can use these variables, how you actually put those into practice. That's obviously up to you yourself. But now that we have this task, we can go back into like any random state tree. Uh, let's say when we go into like the melee state or whatever, uh, we can add in our new, that's a property, uh, our new task. So let's add in a task and add in our test task that I made. And here you can see we have this listener and this dispatcher. So if I make um, on like dead, if I also make uh, a new task of type test task. So now you can see uh, if I click on this, it doesn't have anything for me uh, to bind to. And that is because this can only bind to things that are guaranteed to exist when this thing exists, which means that it can only bind to tasks above itself because this works in a linear uh, one thing at a time way or on uh, tasks that are directly its parents. So we have one here on the dead state. The dead state and the melee state don't really like share uh, any direct like inheritance connection because they both in the end go back to root. But from root, we can go either to dead or then to like select behavior at random, attacking melee. So when we're in melee, there's no guarantee that dead uh, is active. Matter of fact, it's actually uh, guaranteed that it's not active. <laughs> So you can't bind from melee to dead because 
these two are mutually exclusive and it's already like paying attention to that. So if I add in another of these test tasks, I made another one uh, just to like test this out as we go, you'll be able to see that this top one can't bind to anything because it can't find anything that is guaranteed to exist when it exists. This one below it though can guarantee that the one directly above it exists so we can bind to it. In a similar fashion, if we go to this selects behaviors at random, we can uh, make a task on here, our test task, and this one won't be able to bind that to anything, but now if I go back to my melee, this should now be able to bind to the thing on select behaviors at random, because by the time melee exists, its parent state, in this case the parent of its parent, uh, obviously will also exist. So let's test that theory. We can now see we can select that test task. And this one will now have the two options. The one, the one on top of it in this state, and the one in one of its parent states. So this is uh, honestly together with the fact that we can now filter specific tasks on finishing the state or not, and checking, hey, do we want any of these to be able to finish the state, or do we need all of them to finish to finish the state? Those two things are some huge improvements to the way state trees work. And a very big thank you to all my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help support the channel or get any of the project files in any of my tutorials, there's a link down below to the Patreon page to support me or alternatively as a YouTube member. And of course, an extra massive thank you to my Cave Digger tier supporters, Sergey Thomas, Mauricio Ferrias, and my Cave Student tier supporters, Oiku, and Earl Monsville Erno.